word cycle, immediately you are going to think about something that is periodic, right? It's repeating. Do you remember what is the first example of a periodic system that we studied? Otherwise, I will go to Patricia's office. Uh, a pendulum, for example, or also be the harmonic oscillator with a spring and a mass. Okay. Now, if you do remember, for example, in the case of the harmonic oscillator and the spring and the mass, this was the relationship. So the parameters that are building, that are deciding the system, are causing the periodicity. Or if you want to be classic for a pendulum, that's the, let's call it Galileo's law. <coughs> so given the length of the pendulum, given the acceleration of gravity, the period is given. And we call that harmonic motion. Sines, cosines, and the period. Now, when you hear the word cycle in the terms, in the, in the context of the seismic cycle, don't think about periodicity. Okay? It's not periodic. But by cycle, maybe we can refer to something that, on different time scales, maybe thousands of years, is containing seismicity. But it's a complicated process. We are going to study it maybe with Karim, with Karim's course. What we really care about this system here is that we can divide the situation into We try to enlarge it. Or we can use the PDF with the modified some slides. Let's try to resist. It's hard to happen. Oh. Okay, let's stay here. Okay. Now if we take a snapshot of a system from a global perspective. We can divide, how to say, sources of earthquakes into two important regimes, divergent boundaries and convergent boundaries. What does it mean? That the dynamics are different. We have a brittle system, because to have earthquakes, we need something that is brittle, not that tile. And brittle means that it can break, like this. So if I push the system here, sooner or later, if I overcome the resistance, it's going to break. OK? Uh, it's not a good metaphor of an earthquake, but we can think to that system in terms of rheology. What does it mean, rheology? The behavior of a mechanical system subjected to forces in time. Now, this. Animation that is not an animation, actually, could show to us, for example, that we have two systems, a lithosphere and a stenosphere, that in a dynamic context are behaving in a totally different way. The stenosphere actually is flowing. It's not going to break. It's going to deform permanently. And it's, how to say, well, let's start from lithosphere. Lithosphere is coming from the ancient Greek, means the behavior of the rock. It doesn't mean it's brittle. So we can push it, we can knock it, and if we apply forces to that, sooner or later it's going to break. And it's involving the crust in the upper part of the mantle. What about a stenosphere? Well, it's mainly the mantle. Now, if you do remember the wave physics course, you should tell me, come on, the mantle is solid. It's not fluid, right? Do you remember? There are S waves in the mantle. The outer core is liquid, but the mantle is solid. So why it's behaving in a ductile way? The key factor here is time, because over a million of years, the stenosphere is behaving like a fluid with convection inside, typical of a fluid system. The lithosphere 
goes over long time scales, he is behaving like a solid. So it's brittle. So we have a transition, a logical transition between a brittle system and a ductile system. Remember the concept of time. So when a wave is passing in the crossing inside the mantle, it's so rapid. You could say rapid? Yeah. Is it really rapid? Yeah, relative to the millions of years, it's rapid. That's the point. For example, there is a slide here that is showing to us the waves. And we have seen a picture similar to this one we discussed the moles. If you give a look to this picture here, you will see that the waves, seismic waves, after 90 minutes cross the Earth and arrive to the other side of the Earth, to the antipodal position. And after three hours, the waves are able to come back to the epicenter of the region. Three hours, it's a long time, but it's nothing compared to thousand or million of years. So, when seismic waves are passing inside the Earth, it's a snapshot. It's very rapid. So the mantle is solid. But if you take the same system of a million of years, the asthenosphere is flowing. So it's able to contain convection and convection cells. If you wait for a million of years, mountains can build. And they are solid. So everything is flowing. If you use the, if you use a, an enough long time window. Now, what we are going to study in this course actually is an earthquake. It could be very rapid. The sequence of earthquakes in a region can be also very rapid. For example, hundred of years, thousand of years. Still, is nothing compared to million. Of years. So please remember the different time scales. And that's why in this not animated lecture, I was using this. What is it? <coughs> this concept. I cannot animate it. I'm sorry about that. I will try to fix this problem. And this is the summary of introduction, if you want. What's the concept here is that on the top there is an animation referring to, for example, 80 million of years. And maybe you can use your imagination to see a plume that is forming at the bottom of the mantle and flowing up, as if it is a solid, million of years. So give a look to this picture here that is coming from a Stein and a session textbook that will be the most important reference text for this course. Okay, you can find the um session is quite a famous book. There are many copies here. There are many copies also in the university. Okay. And if you are good, you can also find many copies on the web. Legal books, mm -hmm. okay? Because we are recording. So this picture here is coming from that text. And you see here the time. Okay, but the domain of geodynamics, it's not my cup of tea, but you can see tectonics, plane motions, and stuff like that. Now, when you go on short in time scales, maybe now geodesy is entering into the game. And why? Well, geodesy in principle, at the beginning of this science, was the study of the shape of the Earth. So something that is supposed to be static. But actually, modern geodesy is based on GPS. And you will see in this introduction now, the use of the GPS with a short enough sampling time is like to use a seismograph. And you will see this just with the very simple pictures. OK, and that's the real of the seismic cycle. 2,000 years, 100 years, it depends on the rate of convergence or 
What we are going to use actually is something that is lasting pretty much nothing compared to these times here. It is the use of seismic waves to study the structure of the Earth as we did in the wave physics course, if you remember the basics of tomography, body wave tomography, surface wave tomography. So the use of seismic waves to study the interior of the Earth, but in this course we will use seismic waves to study <coughs> the generation of seismic waves. So the study of the seismic source. So we already considered this topic here, but in this course we are going to use it not to study the string, but to study the player. So listening to the music played by the string, now we will have to understand the character of the player. Okay? No more the study of the, of the string. So please remember time scales. You may have very long ones, geodynamics, shorter ones to study the seismic cycle, so seismicity, very short ones compared to what? To those millions of years to study the seismic source. Now, what about seismic source? Well, now you have to use again your imagination. This was supposed to be an animation. But what if you use 